Colin Ross Flybox. I've been fielding a, a handful of questions on dubbing techniques. There's a lot of them. I get a, a lot of uh, questions about what I use and why I use it. Um, I'm going to simplify things a little bit for uh, basic tires who are, are looking for uh, for a few answers on, on what they can do and how many dubbings they, dubbing styles they're going to need to use. Uh, and I'm going to drop back to uh, the way I was taught and the way I still do it for uh, the vast majority of my flies. There's a number of different techniques out there. Uh, a lot are very effective. A lot are very specific to the types of threads you use. And uh, a lot of them are very specific to the type of dubbing that's being used. What I'm going to do here is uh, demonstrate three different techniques to get three different results using the same thread and the same dubbing. So you can see exactly what changes uh, when you change your technique slightly. Uh, I'm going to start off with I use uh, uni thread for probably 95% of all my time. I'm going to start off with a dot. This is tan, and I'm going to dub using tan hairline rabbit dubbing, your standard hairline rabbit. And the first technique we use, or I use, is standard just saliva dubbing. Uh, I'm going to apply the the dubbing to the thread with, by just wetting my fingertips. And applying either a thin or heavy coat of uh, of uh, dubbing to get the results I want. We're going to go fairly thin to begin with. Uh, I generally don't use when I'm when it's when I'm touch dubbing uh, saliva dubbing. Uh, I do not use wax. I'm only spinning it on with my fingers, and I'm looking for a very slender body. Now I'm going to tie all three of these on the same hook. It's a uh, it's a 7x size two streamer hook, so the body's going to look a little bit larger than what you would think of on, on a dry fly. However, uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use this hook. And when I spin my light coating of dubbing on single strand, and then you can build your body or keep it. just one in front of the other. Whatever your technique is being used for, if you're tying a slender body, it's going to probably be one in front of the other. And you don't get a perfectly smooth body when you're using hairline, but for uh, demonstration purposes, hairline actually, I tied with a hairline rabbit all my flies for probably the first three or four years that I tied. I uh, had no reason really to change. We'll go a little bit farther with that. So you'll see. Add a little bit more so that the, the uh, comparison will stand out a little bit more. And you just apply the dubbing directly to the thread. And this is pretty much what everybody uses to start with. And then if if you uh, need for some materials such as ice dub or a lot of your synthetics or some real spiky uh, material like squirrel dubbing uh, you'll want to add a little bit of wax but basically that's your basic dubbing technique right there give or take the dubbing amount to build a, uh, a th the body or uh, keep it thin the next technique we're going to use is a loop technique I use a thread loop Place my finger on the thread, double my thread over, give a few wraps, give one turn around the loop to lock it in place, and then move my thread forward to the point where I'm going to stop. And for this technique, I always wax, because this is a touch dub. So you apply dubbing, I, I apply dubbing to both sides just to make sure that the material adheres correctly and we're still going to use the same dubbing. We'll apply our rabbit. You don't need to overdo it with this. And the first first version of a, a loop dub I'm going to show here is is when I'm looking for more of a segmented body. You can use a loop dub for both spiky or segmented. 
I apply my dubbing, touch it to the wax. I use a, I personally use a shepherd's hook. You can use hackle pliers uh, with a dubbing tool. You can use a dubbing tool. I still use a shepherd's hook. It's the first one I ever bought. And then we're going to spin. We're going to spin until you no longer see the thread in the inner part of that dubbing noodle. Once you can no longer see the thread itself, that means the dubbing is twisted around it. Then for this purpose to go segmented, I wet my fingers and I counter spin with a fairly tight twist just over the dubbing itself. You're not letting the 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 tool spin just the dubbing you're just tightening the dubbing up and then we're going to wind it forward you've taken the spiky look out of it you basically have a rope and you're going to go one in front of the other and you'll see it'll be a very level wrap and although it'll look like a standard body as you're uh, wrapping and then you tie off your loop it'll look like a standard body when you're wrapping as opposed to the first dubbing where all we did was saliva apply it with saliva but if you touch it I'll show you here if you touch that body or you take your bodkin along that body lightly you'll feel the segmentation because that's a very tight dubbing noodle and when it gets wet you'll see the segmentation even more if in turn you're applying say a ribbing to that if you fall in with that with that uh, that segmented uh, look and you fall, fall in line with your wraps it'll look even more segmented so again standard dubbing body more of a segmented body with a loop now if you're looking for a very spiked body I do the same thing loop over your finger three wraps in front come behind one wrap to lock it in place move your thread to the front now with this technique you're still gonna apply the wax on both sides And then you're going to touch dub the same rabbit. And we're going to apply just a little bit more. Extend that noodle a little bit. And then once your dubbing is applied, grab your grab it with your shepherd's hook. And if something pops out, you can always just touch it back on there. And then you're going to spin. And you're going to spin like you did before until you no longer see the thread in the middle. It just looks like a tight rope of dubbing. And then you're going to wrap straight from there. So instead of counter spinning, you're just gonna dub what you get after you twist and you're gonna dub forward and when you're trying to get a spiky body you don't want to wrap over your your wraps too much you want to keep them pretty much one in front of the other till maybe you get to the thorax section and then we'll tie off now like I said there's many techniques uh, a lot of people split their thread I don't generally um, I have some patterns I do if I feel the need to but there you are Three basic techniques with the same dubbing. No need to change the dubbing. No need to change the thread.
So you don't have to buy a lot of material. You don't have to buy a lot of additional equipment. You can use the same thread and the same dubbing for a, a variety of different applications. Standard dub body, just twist it on with uh, saliva wet fingers, no wax. A loop body with wax, counter spun to get a segmented look. And then a looped, a loop dubbing noodle, touch dub with wax, the same as the second one, but not counter, not counter spun, and wrapped on for a spiky nymph type application. I hope that explains some for you. I know the questions were put uh, specifically to this question or this application, and uh, I wanted to try and do it justice so that uh, the, those questions are answered. If you have any questions, you can reply uh, to the video. If not, apply directly to my blog, Rouse Flybox. Other than that, hope uh, this adds to your 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 box, and I'll see you on the water. Thank you.